my whole family gathered on this some earlier this year um, to celebrate and remember my father. It was a wonderful gathering. I have a very small family, and, um, but we were all there together. It had been a long time since we'd all been together, so it was just a really wonderful um, gathering. It was great to hear um, each other's stories about, about my dad. Uh, but about halfway through that time of being together, I noticed that my back was hurting. And when I keyed into why is my back hurting, I realized that I had kind of taken on the posture that I had as a child, which was kind of slumped over, <laughs> diminishment of my full height. And that's so interesting. It's so interesting that unconsciously, I was kind of walking back in time and uh, becoming the, uh, you know, taking on even in my body the same uh, relationship with myself and my family that I uh, had as an early child, as a child. This happens to us, right? Anybody else try to go home and you and you realize like I'm kind of being different here. I'm kind of taking on some of the childhood um, things, right? Anybody? Yeah. It's, ama- it's an amazing experience. Likewise, when your kids come home, uh, you begin, I mean, I'll just, you know, talk about myself here, but, I mean, my kids do amazing things out in the world. They have kids. They have professions. But when they come home, they're my kids. <laughs> and I really try not to do that, but it's just, we just walk into those patterns very, very quickly and very easily. So, um, this, uh, you know, when the Western Conference finals were going on, and Steph Curry had this like amazing breakout game, um, and he, you know, scored like 35 points. I mean, they won by this amazing margin. And but at one point, when he was just hot, he was just like the court was his. You know, he kind of he says later he kind of blacked out. So he did this dance, you know, and then he just raised his fist. He said, "This whole house is exploded, exploded mine." <laughs> and afterwards, his mother, Sonia, <laughs> she did not even remark about the great game he had. She just said, you need to wash your mouth out with soap. <laughs> Our families remind us where we're from. When um, Lillian Carter, when President Carter, you know, was told his mother that he was going to run for president, she said, well, of what? <laughs> yeah. Thank goodness for our families, right? They keep us in check. They remind us who we are. So Jesus goes home in our gospel today. He goes home. And they've heard about it. I mean, they've heard that he's made really big. He is that big he has big news. There's a lot of uh, you know, not rumor, but I mean, buzz about him. And so they're all interested. Like, who is, you know, so they come, they hear him out, but you know, they just cannot get past knowing who he really is. Or who they think he really is. So they go, well, is this Mary's son? Now, normally you would say the dad's name. Would say, this, isn't this Joseph's son? So just to even say, isn't this Mary's son? That is a not so subtle jab at uh, his, you know, parentage. Not so sure. Not so sure about him. Wasn't Mary like pregnant before they got married? Whose baby really is he? So that's containing that. Isn't this Mary's son? And then they say, isn't he the carpenter? Now a carpenter wasn't like high status. So they're saying, isn't he Mary's son? Isn't he the carpenter? Oh, we know his brothers and sisters. They're all here with us. So he can't really do very much. But he is he's back home, and he, they immediately try to suck him back into the, um, into the dynamics that were going on his, in his home. Kind of comforting to know that this happens even to Jesus. <laughs> but because they can't, because
because they're caught up unconsciously in those family dynamics that they cannot see. They think they, they think they know who he is. But they can't see who he actually is. So, my friends, this helps us, I think, the good news for us is that in Christ, as kin to Christ, we can and we are called to wake up, to see even our nearest and dearest, even the people that we you know, share our coat closet with and brush our teeth with and the people that you pick your nose around because you're so comfortable with them, right? Even to see them in their essential, to know that they're essentially unknowable and that new things are happening all the time, even with the people that you are, are closest to. And then if you can each day have the intention to see with fresh eyes, to see with wonder and curiosity, who is this person? How can I honor them? How can I see them fresh in God's eyes and see the newness that is even now arising? Even now arising. And that's not to take away, I mean, so if we want to do that, but we also, the comfort of home is huge. To be able to go home and that they, you know, they do know you. They do know your foibles and your awkwardnesses and your uniquenesses. And home is where they have to take you in, right? So the comfort and ease of home is also true. And even when Jesus, you know, that homecoming was pretty disappointing. I mean, for the few sick people that he did heal, it was a big deal. I mean, even for those few, that's, that, that was a big thing. But overall, it was a pretty disappointing homecoming. But even in the midst of that disappointing homecoming, it was still that, that ease and comfort of being home. And we see that afterwards, his ministry expands exponentially. He anoints and sends out his disciples and says, don't, you don't need anything. You need only the gospel truth of God's love. That is enough. And I'm going to send you out, and you're going to anoint and heal. And his ministry just expands exponentially. And I don't think that's untied to the fact that he was just home. You know, he probably just had a good meal. <laughs> a meal that he knew that Mary cooked just for him. So home is, is home. And I'm not just saying by home. I don't just mean our home. I mean our church. I mean those places where we know each other and see each other week after week and love one another as the caller says, with pure affection. But where we can also get stuck in dynamics. Same dynamics. So, let's take this challenge and good news of this gospel, number one. Relationships are complex. Home, church, you know, all complex. It's good, it's comforting, it's easeful, uh, and we need to keep stay awake to the newness that is always arising. And secondly, that we can be sent out from here. We can be sent out from here and from the doors and living rooms of your own home with, with renewed courage uh, to take up your own life and to let God move dramatically in it of healing and good news. Thanks be to God. For home. Amen. Amen.